Good morning, class. We are looking at module one, which covers chapters one, two, three. Here's chapter one, introduction to statistics. True or false? The value of variance and standard deviation is never negative. That's a true statement. These are absolute quantities. That is a measure of variation of all values from the mean. It can be zero. Here's the justification from the formula point of view. The population variance, which we use sigma squared, by the way, we use Greek letters for the uh, population parameters, is the summation. That means add them up, x minus mu quantity squared over capital N. This represents the population size. Standard deviation, which represented with sigma, is the square root of that. And as you can see, x minus mu, whether it's positive or negative, makes no difference. When you square it, it becomes positive. You add up a bunch of positive values. It remains positive. You divide by uh, population size, and the Ratio of a positive over positive is always positive. Uh, it could be zero. And by, by the way, uh, in uh, quality control and, uh, for example, in manufacturing, uh, the smaller the standard deviation, the better it is because it's more consistent. In fact, zero is ideal. When we deal with the sample, we use S squared versus sigma squared. And that summation of X minus X bar quantity is good over N minus one. And this is a shorthand notation. This is one way to calculate it. Later on, when we look at an example, I'll show you how the calculation works. And again, the same concept, the top is positive, so is the bottom. And therefore, uh, variance as well as standard deviation will always be positive. It could be zero, and what is S, the square root of that. Variance, standard deviation. All right, uh, what kind of variable weights of bears is quantitative or qualitative? It's quantitative variable. Okay, weights of bears gives numbers that represent counts or measurement. What kind of variable gender of bears is quantitative or qualitative? It's qualitative. Gender of bears is distinguished by non-numeric characteristics. So I appreciate if somebody starts reading this for us, please. Quantitative and qualitative variables are two types of variables usually used in data analysis and statistics. Quantitative variables, also known as numerical value variables, represent measurements or quantities that can be expressed numerically. Qualitative variables, also known as categorical variables, represent characteristics or qualities that do not have a numerical value. These variables are typically divided into categories or groups. Examples of qualitative variables include gender, marital status, or types of cars. In summary, quantitative variables involve numerical measurements or quantities, while qualitative variables represent non-numerical characteristics or categories. Perfect, thank you so much. Define population and sample in statistics. Population is the complete collection of all elements, scores, people, measurements, etc., to be studied. Sample, it's a sub-collection, portion or fraction of elements drawn from a population. Could somebody read this paragraph for us? Uh, population. The population refers to the entire set of individuals 
objects or events that possess certain characteristics of interest and are the subject of statistical investigation. However, populations can be large and sometimes impossible to study in their entirety due to practical limitations. Sample. A sample is a subset or smaller representative group selected from the population. It is a portion of the population that is chosen to represent the whole. In summary, the population refers to the entire group of interests. While a sample is a smaller subset selected from the population for analysis. Statistical analysis are typically conducted on samples to draw conclusions about the population from which they were drawn. Perfect. Thank you so much. The value of the middle term in a ranked data set is called the median given any data, how do you find the mode? Mode is the value that appears with the greatest frequency among the data. A data set can have a one, more than one, or no mode, when all numbers appear with equal frequency. True or false? The number of chairs is considered to be a continuous variable. That's a false statement. The number of chairs is not continuous. We cannot have one fourth of a chair. So the concept of a discrete data result when the number of possible values is either a finite number or a countable number of possible values, zero, one, two, three, and so forth. Examples, number of students in a class, number of cars in a parking lot. Continuous, data that can take any value in an interval, data result from infinitely many possible values that correspond to some continuous scale that covers a range of values without gaps, interruptions, or jump examples, the weight or height of a person. What is a Pareto chart? What does each axis represent? Could somebody read this, please? Anyone? Uh, a Petro chart named after Wilfredo Petero is a bar graph for categorical qualitative data, similar to histograms for quantitative data, which is used to summarize discrete or continuous data that are measured on an interval scale. The vertical scale represents fre frequencies or relative frequencies, and horizontal scale represents different categories. Bars are arranged in descending order to emphasize the order of impact. So in short, Pareto charge is like a bar graph or histogram. Histogram is normally used for quantitative data. Pareto chart is used for uh, qualitative. And we put the frequencies or percent frequencies in descending order to emphasize the order of impact. Define a parameter and a statistic. Parameter, a numerical measurement describing some characteristic of a population. Statistic, a numerical measurement describing some characteristic of a sample. In other words, they are the same. This pertains to the population. Parameter statistic pertains to a sample. Define random sample and simple random sample. Can somebody read this, please? Random sample. 
members of the population are selected in such a way that each individual member has an equal chance of being selected. Simple random sample of size n. Subjects selected in such a way that every possible sample of the same size n has the same chance of being chosen. Excellent. Uh, the idea is that for the sake of argument in the class, we have 30 students. A random sample means every student must have an equal chance of one over 30 to be selected. That's random sample. Simple random uh, sample. If we want to choose a sample size of, let's say, five, every sample of the same size, namely five, must have the same chance. And by the way, as, as long as you change one member, the sample is changing. And that the number of samples is really using, it's a pretty high number. It's a combination of 30 choose five. So we want to distinguish between the two. All right, we want to define the following types of sampling, systematic, convenience, stratified, and cluster. I want to ask someone to be kind enough to read the whole page for us. So we're going to go paragraph by paragraph. Go ahead, somebody read this, please. Systematic sampling, select some starting point and then select every cake element in population. Perfect. Please continue. Example, in a population of 50,000 people, a statistician selects every hundredth person for sampling. Excellent. Continue, please. Convenient sampling, use results that are easy to get. Example. Example, standing at a mall or a grocery store and asking people to answer questions would be an example of a convenient sample. Stratified sampling, please continue. Str stratified sampling, divide the population into homogeneous. The subjects within the same subgroup must be similar and share the same characteristics. Subgroups called strata, and then obtaining a simple random sample from each subgroup, stratum. Please continue. Cluster sampling. Cluster sampling. Divide the population into sections or clusters, non-homogeneous subgroups to randomly selected some of those clusters and choose all the members from those selected clusters. Perfect. Thank you so much. So class, uh, sometimes students uh, um, mix up the stratified sampling and cluster sampling. In the case of a stratified sampling, the groups that you put into uh, one category, they must be uh, homogenous. They must be the same, okay? So we have uh, four different groups, but each group is homogenous. So um, therefore, and then uh, obtaining a simple random, uh, random uh, sample from, from each group, we pick a few. Whereas cluster, each group, represents the population. And then we have a bunch of them. We pick one or more than one randomly. Stratified versus cluster. What are different levels of measurement of data? Give examples. Again, I want to ask somebody to help us with this page, the whole page. So please go ahead. Nominal, go ahead. Nominal level of measurement is described by data that consists of names, labels, or categories only, and the data cannot be arranged in some order, such as low to high. Perfect. Example? Example. Survey responses of yes, no, and undecided. Eye colors blue, brown, black, other, political party, Democrat, Republican, independent, other. Ordinal level. 
Ordinal level of measurement involves data that can be arranged in some order, but differences obtained by subtraction between data values either cannot be determined, determined or are meaningless. Examples. Ranks of colleges. Ranks can be first, second, third, and so on, which determines an ordering. Assigning grades of A, B, C, D, or F, these grades can be arranged in order, but we can't determine difference between the grades. So in short, nominal is qualitative, completely ordinal, the qualitative, but some sort of order. Uh, let's continue with this. We are not finished with this course. Please continue with the interval. Interval level of measurement involves data that can be arranged in order, and the differences between data values can be found and are meaningful. However, there is no natural zero starting point at which none of the quantity is present. A value of zero does not mean the absence of the quantity. Arithmetic operations such as addition and subtraction can be performed on values of the variable. Example. Body temperatures of 98.2 degrees Fahrenheit and 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, years 1000, 2000, 1776, and 1492. Ratio level. Ratio level of measurement data can be arranged in order. Differences can be found and are meaningful, and there is a natural zero starting point, where zero indicates that none of the quality of the quantity is present. Differences and ratios are both meaningful. Arithmetic operations such as multiplication and division can be performed on the values of the variable. Examples. Distances traveled. Zero kilometers represents no distance traveled and 400 kilometers is twice as far as 200 kilometers. Prices of books, Zero dollars does represent no cost, and a hundred dollar book does cost twice as much as a fifty dollar book. Perfect, thank you so much. So, we also have the uh, measurement, the level of measurements, also have the format interval as well as the ratio. And uh, in the case of an interval, uh, we don't have a natural zero, and as far as understanding it to a certain degree. Uh, arithmetic operations of addition subtraction can be done. In the case of a ratio, uh, we also have a natural zero, and zero means uh, the uh, lack of presence in essence. For example, distance of zero means no distance was covered, and uh, even division and multiplication do have a meaning. Perfect, everybody. What's the difference between an observational study and an experiment? Give examples. Again, I would like to ask someone to read the page for us, please. Go ahead. Observational study. I read. Please. Observing and measuring specific characteristics without attempting to modify and influence the individuals being studied. In an observational study, the researcher merely obs observes and tries to draw conclusions based on the observations. Example. Oh, keep going. Please. Okay. A study took a random sample of adults asking them about their bedtime habits. The data showed um, that people who drank a glass of warm milk before bedtime were more likely to go to sleep earlier than those who didn't. Experiment. Apply some treatment and then observe its effects on the individuals. The individuals and experiments are called experimental units, and they are often called subjects when they are people. In other words, an experiment is a uh, control study that aims to determine the effect of one or more independent explanatory variable or factors on a dependent outcome response variable. 
Any combination of the values of the factors is called a treatment. The researchers manipulates the independent explanatory variable and tries to determine how the manipulation influences the dependent outcome response variable in an experimental study. Example. Um, one second. An another study took group of adults and randomly divided them into two groups. One group was told to drink warm milk every night for a week, while the other group was not told to drink warm, warm milk that week. Researchers then compare when each group fell asleep. Perfect. So in short, when we look at observational study, we just observe. And we write the data. In the case of an experiment, there are factors that will have an effect and we control them to see the effect of that. An example of that was that just bunch of people drink warm milk before the bedtime and we observe what happens. Whereas asking a group to drink the warm milk and another group not to, we can compare and contrast. That would be an experiment. Describe cross-sectional, retrospective, and prospective studies give examples. Again, I want to ask someone to be kind enough to read for us, starting with cross-sectional study. Go ahead, please. Cross-sectional study. Data are observed and observational study measured and collected at one point in time. A cross-sectional study is like a snapshot of a particular group of people at a given point in time. It is used to describe what is happening at that time. Example. A medical study examining the frequency of cancer among the population of different geographical locations. By doing this, any differences among them can most likely be attributed to geographical location differences rather than something that happened over time. Retrospective. Retrospective or case control study. Data are collected from the past by going back in time. Data that already exists. Example. Researchers ask participants about their smoking habits over the past 20 years. Then they can analyze any possible correlations between their smoking habits and diseases such as lung cancer. So basically, both of them are um, uh, observational study, and we looked at a cross-section happening at the time versus in the past. Please continue. The question is not finished. Prospective. Prospective or longitudinal. 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 Longitudinal or core, cohort study. Data are collected in the future from groups called co co cohorts sharing common factors. Longitudinal studies look at a group of people over an extended period. Example. A medical study follows a cohort of middle-aged people who are who vary in terms of smoking habits to test the hypothesis that the 20-year incidence uh, rate of lung cancer will be the highest among heavy smokers, followed by moderate smokers, and then non-smokers. Example, the Fram Framingham. 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 Framingham Heart Study began in 1948 and is a long-term ongoing cardiovascular cohort study of residents of the city of Framingham. Massachusetts. Perfect. Thank you so much. So uh, cross-sectional, retrospective, and uh, prospective or longitudinal or cohort that has been going on for a while. What is sampling error, non-sampling error, non-random sampling error? Again, I'd like to ask you to read the page, please, starting with sampling error.
Go ahead, please. Sampling error is the difference between a sample result and the true population result that is the consequence of chance sampling variations. Non-sampling error? The non-sampling error occurs due to data that are incorrectly collected, recorded, or analyzed. It may happen by selecting a biased sample using a defective instrument or copying the data incorrectly. Non-random sampling error? Non-random sampling error is the result of using a sampling method that is not random, such as using a convenience sample or a voluntary response sample. Since this is important, I put it here also. Voluntary response sample or self-selected survey? Go ahead. One in which the respondents themselves decide whether to be included. In this case, valid conclusions can be made only about the specific group of people who agree to participate. Perfect. Uh, class, so this is as far as various sampling is concerned. The obviously the sampling error is due to the fact that there is a difference in size, of course, between sample and population. It could happen, it's expected. Uh, non sampling error normally, when there's some sort of an error, uh, is involved. Now, non random sampling, and sometimes we don't have a choice, okay, when we don't choose the sample properly. Uh, random uh, sampling is extremely important, but sometimes we may not have a choice, okay? All right. What are some characteristics of an experiment? Confounding occurs in an experiment when the experimenter is not able to distinguish between the effects of the different factors. Common confounders are characteristics of the participants, such as body mass index, smoking status, age at onset of illness, socioeconomic status, educational status, extent of support network, and life events. So we want to know, for example, about lung cancer, which is the outcome. We are checking the effect of alcohol. But there are other factors. One example is smoking. We should consider that, and if we don't, that would be a confounder as a result. So there are other factors. And if you pay attention to everything that we mentioned you, that's extremely important. One of the thing, one of those factors that is extremely important when it comes to health, especially, pay attention to this one extent of support of network. Network can be friends, family, members, you name it. Okay? This is extremely important. Blinding. Subject does not know he or she is receiving a treatment, treatment or placebo. You know, placebo is when you don't actually receive the treatment. It's, they normally call it the sugar pen. Blocks. Groups of subjects with similar characteristics are called blocks in an experiment. We're going to continue. Completely randomized experimental design. Subjects are put into blocks through process of random selection. When you have different blocks, how do you how do you suggest how do you uh, uh, pick your uh, subject, random process. Replication. Repetition of an experiment when there are 
enough subjects to recognize the differences in different treatments. That is extremely important. However, again, in some cases, we may not have that luxury. If you're checking the effect of some medication on uh, patients, you may not have enough patients or volunteers for that matter. Sample size. Sample size refers to the number of individuals or items selected from a population to be included in a sample for a research study or statistical analysis. It must be large enough to display the true nature of the population data and should be obtained using an appropriate random method. Again, uh, sometimes there are limitations. Limitations may be that we don't have enough subjects or there is not enough uh, resources to therefore find those subjects. Explain some misuses of statistics. I like somebody to read this page for us, please. Go ahead. Go ahead, please. Anybody? Explain some misuses of statistics. Bad samples, small samples, misleading graphs, distorted percentages, loaded questions, order of questions, refusals, correlation and casualty, self-interest study, precise numbers, partial pictures. Uh, it's correlation and causality, which means correlation doesn't necessarily uh, means causation. Go ahead, please. Pictographs. Bless you. Uh, pictographs double the length, width, and height of a cube, and the volume increases by a factor of eight. To correctly interpret a graph, we should analyze the numerical information given in the graph instead of being misled by its general shape. And this is an example where you have one side to be 10, and the volume is 10 cubed, whereas here 10 times 2 is 20, but 20 cubed is 8 times more. Go ahead, deliberate distortions. Deliberate distortions, loaded question. Should the governor have the line item veto to eliminate waste? Should the governor have the line item veto or not? Depending on the question, the way this one works, they got 95% uh, positive answers, yes. This one doesn't mention the waste, and it was a lot less, 53%, and that is known as a loaded question, the way the question is asked. Go ahead, finally, the note. If sample data are not collected in an appropriate way, the data may be completely useless, that no amount of statistical training can salvage them. Randomness typically plays a critical role in determining which data to collect. Excellent. Thank you so much. So these are some misuses of uh, statistics. I want to look at this question for you. A research center questioned 2,000 adults in the U.S. to estimate the proportion of the population favoring death penalty for murderers. It was found that 70% are in favor of death penalty for murderers. State the following individual variable population, so on and so forth, sample parameter and statistics. So let's start, let's start with the population. What is the population? See, 2,000 adults in the US, so that must be a sample. So all adults in US must be the population. Sample would be those 2,000 adults. The 2,000 adults in the U.S. survey. Individual would be one of those, one adult. So all adults is the population. The 2,000 that we asked would be the sample, and any one of those would be an individual. What is the variable? What is changing? Either you're in favor or you're not. So favoring death penalty for murderers. 
Now, statistics. Out of those 2,000 people, 70% were in favor. It doesn't mean the population, 70% of those. And so the answer is the 70% in favor of death penalty for murderers in this study. That would be the statistics. As far as the parameter is concerned, we don't have that class. I want you to know that. In some instances, so again, it is unknown. However, in some texts, they may use the same 70% in favor of death penalty for murderers in the US. But generally speaking, this is a wrong assumption. This is a statistic, I'm just mentioning it. And uh, I want you to pay attention to that. Decide if each of the following describes an observational study or an experiment. A, the height of shoppers at the mall was recorded. We're just recording, we are just observing. We are not manipulating anything, we are not changing anything. A drug is given to a group of people and the reaction is observed. Definitely we are experimenting about the effect of that medication drug. A group of students are told to listen to music while taking a test. And the results are compared to a group not listening to music. Definitely we are experimenting Two different groups. We are interested in the factor of listening to music. The temperature on a randomly selected days throughout the year were measured. We are just measuring, we are just observing. The gender of children born in January were tallied. There's nothing we are doing except observing. So again, observational study. The growth rate of bacteria is compared before and after adding alcohol. Definitely we are giving the treatment of alcohol. Definitely we are experimenting. So clearly there's a difference between the two. We are experimenting here. 